Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm and this is video three in computer programming. And in this video, we're actually gonna do something, which is nice. Uh, by the way, if this screen seems confusing to you, if you've never seen this before in your life, you may have skipped video two. So you need to go back and do that because that video explains how to install the IDE and how to install the SDK for the language that we're gonna, that we're gonna write in. So uh, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how to, I'm gonna assume that you've already done that and you have this screen open right now and I'm going to walk you through the steps for writing your first, your very own first application. Um, I'm excited and I hope you are too. Let's get to it. So at this window, this is the start page of Microsoft Visual Studio. Here I want to actually create a new application. So I'm going to go up to file, go to new project, right? So project is going to be basically everything that goes into one application. So we're gonna create a new project and this window will pop up. Now you're not gonna have all the options I have because you've only installed one SDK and I have numerous, I have many SDKs for all the languages that I'm using, that I'm writing in. But for right now, this, this Visual C Sharp Windows Classic Desktop, that's what you need to have selected. Okay, so you need to navigate to that over in this menu. Then when you look over here, you have a lot of options here. Uh, WPF app, Windows Forms app, Class Library, Empty Project, User Control, all this stuff. We're not really going to focus on any of this. What we want to look at is the console app. Now, some of you who have done a little bit of computer science in the past probably know what console applications are, um, but most of you, I'm going to assume, don't know what that is. So let me give you a quick overview of what console is. So in Microsoft Windows, if I open up my command prompt, my command prompt here, I get this black window, this black window with white text, right? Now, some of you may have seen this before. Oh, let's go back. Some of you may have seen this before, but I'm going to explain what this actually is. This is my operating system. This is Microsoft Windows. So if you look, it says Microsoft Windows version 10 point whatever, right? 2018 Microsoft Corporation, all rights reserved. This is the actual operating system of my, of my computer. Anything I can do on my computer, I can do through this window. But the only way I can interface with this operating system is by typing text. So if I want to go to my desktop, I type CD desktop for change directory desktop, and it takes me to the desktop. And then I can, you know, look at what files I have and open files and run files, delete them. Whatever I want to do, I can do through this window. This is called the console, right? And the console, again, it's only text. Now, that's a benefit for us when we're learning programming because we don't want to get into how to create, you know, images and animations and graphics and all that stuff yet because that stuff is really complicated. So for right now, we're going to focus on text only applications just so we can get the actual, you know, uh, uh, concepts down, right, in a very clean and easy to understand environment. So we're going to be developing applications that run in the console. We're going to be, be developing text-only applications. Now, I, I know you're probably already groaning, thinking, oh, this is going to be boring. I can't see anything cool or flashy or do anything fun with it. I promise you, we're going to make actual games in the console, right? And um, there's going to be a lot of creativity involved. And you'll, you'll see very quickly how creative you need to be to be a good programmer. So we're actually going to do some cool stuff in the console. I'm going to close that out. So I'm going to go back to my console. So again, I want to create a console application. Now, I'm not done yet. There are a couple things I need to do on this menu just to make sure I'm good. First of all, I need to name my application. You never, 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 never want to keep this default, right? Because notice it says console app one. If you create a console app one, meaning you don't rename your application, the next time you make an application, it's going to be console app two. And then after that, it's console app three, console app four. And after a couple of those, it's going to be really hard to figure out what application you want to open up, 
when you're looking for, oh, I remember that example of the syntax and how to do that. That was back in that one project. Let's go find it. You're going to be opening up a bunch of projects because they're not named properly, right? So we want to name these appropriately. This first project we're doing is called Hello World. So I'm going to type Hello World, and I'm going to make mine the Teacher Edition. You can just hello world and then your last name or whatever you want to do, but make sure you name it something. Now, the second thing you want to pay attention to is I didn't put any spaces between my words. Okay, do not put spaces between your words. That's very important. This is just has to be one long word and you can indicate different words by capitalizing the first letter of each word, but do not put spaces in here. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this project is going to be saved in the appropriate area on my hard drive. Now, notice that the default place for this to be saved is inside a folder called source and inside a folder called repos, right? This source folder here is a folder you do not have access to. In this computer lab, you cannot navigate to the source folder. So if you're trying to find your application, you won't be able to. So do not save your files in this source folder. What I recommend is hitting this Browse button right here and saving it onto your desktop. I also recommend probably creating a new folder by right-clicking and going New Folder and create a, new, a folder called Computer Programming and save it in there, okay? Um, save all your work in there. I would probably name it, you know, put your name on it, computer programming. Um, but that's where I would save all of your stuff so that it's contained in an area where you can get to it. You can always get to your, to your desktop, right? So if you put your work on the desktop, it's easy to find. Uh, and you can also back up your work, which again, I would recommend back up your work on a flash drive or put it on your, uh, on a cloud storage service like your Google Drive or your OneDrive. Um, I would always recommend backup your work. Okay, so once I'm sure I have a console application selected, I've given it a new name, and I've chosen a new location, now I can click OK. And it's going to take a minute to build my new application for me, and there are going to be some things in there already that are going to help us out. Now that's those steps that we just went through, you're gonna have to do that every time you create a new application, right? So just get used to naming it, pointing your, uh, putting your files where you want them to be and picking the right uh, project template, basically the you know, console application. All right, cool, now we have a new application. This application doesn't do anything yet, right? There's nothing in here, but wait, there, are, there, there is some stuff in here we don't quite know what this means. All right, let's go through it. First thing I want you to notice is over here, we have numbers. These numbers indicate the lines, right? So if I say there's something on line 10, we'll know that we're talking about this line right here. This is line 10, right? And so on and so forth. So you wanna make sure you understand that when I say line one, two, three, line 12, line 14, whatever, that I'm talking about these numbers on the side here. All right, let's talk about lines one, two, and three. Up here we have these statements that say using system, using system.collections.generic, using system.link, using system.text. These we do not have to really pay attention to for a while. We don't need to understand what these mean for quite a bit of time. So just ignore these. And as a matter of fact, you can actually minimize these to get them out of your way just by clicking that minus, the plus and minus. Perfect. All right, let's take a look at line six. Line six right here says namespace, hello world teacher edition. Now that is the project name. Right? That's the project that we, ju we just created. Yours is going to be different. Yours is going to be whatever you named your project. So this right here basically just means everything inside of these two brackets is inside of my project. Now, if you look at this bracket and you look at this bracket down here, you will see that this is an open bracket and this on line 14 is a closed bracket. That means that these two because they're on the same indentation, right? These two are linked together. So everything in between those two is inside this namespace. 
or this project. So everything from lines 8 to line 13 is inside this project because they're in between these two brackets. And the same thing goes for class program, right? There's a bracket here and a bracket here, a close bracket on line 13, which means everything in between those two brackets is inside the program. All right? That's pretty easy. Let's take a look at line 10. We have static void main string args. We will talk about what that stuff means in another video. You don't necessarily need to understand it right now. But notice there are some brackets here too. There's an open bracket and a close bracket, but there's nothing in here. This means that we have nothing written in our program yet. When you start writing code, you will write your code inside this main right here. So you'll go to line 11, you'll put your cursor to the right of that open bracket and hit enter. And that will create a new line 12. Put your cursor indented inside so that we can see it's going inside of this main. The other thing that you'll notice is that there's some yellow, there's a yellow bar here. This yellow bar indicates to us that we've made changes to this program and we haven't saved it yet. So that's another thing uh, Visual Studio will do for you. It'll help you remember when you've saved your program and what code you'll lose if you close out the program without saving. So this tells us, hey, remember to save this because you've made changes. All right, good. So that's enough basics. Again, we'll go over a lot of this stuff as we go through and make more complicated applications. But for right now, that's all you really need to know to get started. As long as you're on line 12 and you have a flashing cursor ready to type, now we can actually get started and start writing some stuff. All right. The first thing I want to do, the first thing I want my application to do, rather, is I wanted to write some words onto my screen. You remember that console window that I showed you a couple minutes ago? I want some actual words to pop up in that console window. So I'm going to say I want to write something to the console. So I'm going to type the word console. Now look at what happened. A couple things. First of all, my the color of my of my text changed to this light blue here, okay? That just means that that's a keyword that Visual Studio understands, and that's good. We want it to change color. The other thing is, some other things popped up down here in this menu. This menu is very helpful, and it will pop up based on what you're doing. If something pops up in this menu, it's basically just saying, these are options that you have available. It saw that I was typing the word console. It said, let's pull all the words we understand that start with console and give them those options. So this is really helpful if you're trying to remember how to write something specifically. But I actually just want console. So without hitting space, without putting a space here, I'm actually going to put a period. Now when I put that period, a new window popped up with other options that I have available. So if I access the console and hit period, then it tells me here's some other things you can do with console. And I actually know what I want. I want to write, and notice I have some more keywords here. I have write and write line. Now there's a difference between these two, and we'll talk about that later. Right now I actually want a write line. So, and notice, there. so far there's no spaces whatsoever. Everything is all on one line, right? And everything's all together bunched up. I've used capitals to separate words. That's how this wants to be written. Okay, so at this point, I'm telling it I want to write something to the console. Now, what do I want to write? Well, inside of this statement, um, well, let's, let's put it this way. This statement requires me to give it what's called an argument. The argument is essentially what I want it to do. So arguments go inside of parentheses. So I'm going to create some parentheses, and I'm going to put some quotes in there. I'm going to say, hello world. And let's, grammar works, or grammar is important, so let's actually make this look nice. Hello world. Now I put these words inside of quotes because these quotations mean that this is actual, these are actual words. Instead of instructions that I want to give to my compiler, these are actual words, right? So these are words that I want to put on the screen. I want to write the words hello world onto the console window. It's a little convoluted, but you'll get, you'll get the hang of it. Now at the end here, I have this red squiggly line, and the red squiggly line usually tells us that there's an error somewhere. 
right? Well, that error is that I'm not, or I forgot to write my semicolon. And if I hover over the error, it'll tell me, hey, a semicolon is expected. Semicolons are really important. Semicolons indicate that this is the end of this statement, meaning I'm done writing this statement. So I'm going to put a semicolon, and now I'm finished with that statement. At this point, my application should work. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. I'm going to hit this Start button right here. And it will debug and compile my program. You'll see down here it's actually compiling all of that information. My build has started. It's compiling, compiling, compiling. And this shouldn't take very long. All right, build succeeded. Now it's going to actually run my application. Oh, okay. Did you see what happened there? Well, it worked. My application worked. But we didn't really have a chance to enjoy the fact that my application worked. Well, because, hmm, well, what happened? This is a point where you're going to realize that computers really aren't that smart, right? They only can do what you tell it to do. And what did I tell my application to do? Well, I told it to write some words onto my console. Okay, great. But then I didn't give it any extra instructions. So at that point, it said, all right, cool, we're done. And I'm going to close myself out. I didn't tell it to wait for something, right? So there's actually an easy way to tell our console window to stay open until we want it to go, to go away, right? So I'm going to hit enter twice just so that I have some space between my, my statements. And now I want my console to actually read a line. Now, let's talk about this statement really quick. Again, I'm accessing the console. I'm telling the console to do something. And what I'm telling it to do is read a line. And, and, and what that means is it's waiting for the user to type some stuff and push enter before it does anything else. Basically says, hey, I, all right, I'm going to wait for you. And until you do something, I'm just going to chill, right? That's what we want it to do. We want it to wait until my user tells it to do something. Now, why do I have these parentheses here with nothing in it, meaning no arguments? Well, this is something we're going to learn a lot about later on when we start talking about methods and, and whatnot. But basically, just know that this statement needs parentheses at the end, right? And we're not going to give it anything because we don't know what our user is going to type. So we're just going to leave it blank. So just open and close parentheses there. All right, now let's try to run our program again and see what actually happens. Okay. And look, it actually worked. My words got put on the console window, and now my cursor is blinking here, waiting for my user to do something. And if I hit enter, the application goes away. Great, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, perfect. Now, well, we can write anything we want. At this point, we could use these two commands to write a novel on the screen if we wanted to. But let's actually expand that. Before we do that, though, I want to show you something that's critical for you to get into the habit of using. I want to show you how to write a comment. So I'm going to go above my console write line, and I'm going to type forward slash forward slash. Now, notice that those turn green now. What a comment does is it allows me to type whatever I want, notes to myself, you know, explanations of what's going on, and the compiler will not compile those whatsoever. Those will not go into my application. Comments are really helpful for us to kind of figure out what we're doing in our application. So right here, I'm going to writing words to the screen so that, oh, so that helps us remember what this right line does. And above this read line, I'm going to say, uh, wait, waiting for the user. Okay, now with comments, what I do, uh, the way I use comments personally is I like to use comments to help figure out what I want this program to do. So even if I don't know how to make it happen, I put in a comment to remind me this is what I want to happen later. So let's think about what we want this application to do. Well, first, I want to learn how to clear the screen so I can get text to go away. And then I want to actually change the background color. OK, um, and then what I want to do, and actually, once I, once I change the background color, actually, let's clear this out, because I'm going to need to clear the screen after I change the background color, because 
when you change the background color in the console, you need to clear the screen for that change to take effect. So I'm going to clear the screen here. And then I want to change the text color. And I'm going to write some more stuff. And then I'm going to make it wait so I can actually read the stuff that I wrote. OK, so this is going to be a complicated program, but we already have most of the things we need here. Let's talk about how to change the background color very quickly. All right, so in order to change the background color, I want to change the background color of the console, obviously. And if I start looking through this menu, I might be able to find what I'm looking for, right? Background, ooh, background color. And I can actually just double click on that and it'll automatically pop it in there for me, which is really handy. So console.background color. And I need to set the background color to be equal to console color. Okay, console color dot, and here are the options I have. I can make it black or blue or cyan or dark blue, dark red, dark yellow. I'm actually just going to pick red because that's going to be cool looking. And I do not want to forget my semicolon. So now I've changed my background color to red. But in order for it to actually change, I need to clear the screen. So I'm going to console dot clear with an open and close parentheses. And that's going to help me, that's going to allow me to clear my screen of any text that's on it. OK, cool. Let's test that out to make sure my background color changed. Now, this is, again, probably not going to help. It's not going to work. Oh, I saw a very quick flash of red. So my console color actually changed. It'd be better if I could tell it to wait. Console.read, oh, read line. And then I can actually enjoy my red color. Hello world, enter, and now I have a red screen. OK, so that's working. So let's get into learning how to change the text color. Well, that's easy. Console dot. And instead of text color, it's actually going to be foreground. So foreground color right there. And I want to set that equal to console color dot let's do white right white looks good oh let's do white okay semicolon and then i want to write some more stuff here so we already know how to do that console dot write line and i want to write hello new world okay it's not very exciting but you get the idea. So now we have a an application that will write some words to the screen. It will wait for our user to enter, to press enter. It will change the background color to red. It will clear the screen. It will change our foreground color to white, and it will write some new words onto the screen. And it will wait for us to actually do something. So let's make sure our application works. So I'm going to hit start. Now we have hello world. If I press enter, it should say hello new world. Great. We have created our first application. Now at this point, you have all the skills you need to create your first application. And think about it. You can you can get as crazy as you want. You can write out, uh, you know, a, a, a whole book, and every chapter can be a different background color with a different uh, foreground color. Uh, you can do anything you want in this. Now we know how to write stuff to that screen and make it wait for our user to push enter. So with those two skills, you will be able to complete the applicate or the, you'll be able to complete the assignment for this week. Next week, we will get more complicated uh, and we will learn more useful skills to help us build more interesting applications. So I will see you next time and thank you for paying attention.